along with the um, regular C++ example, I want to give a visualizer example that kind of shows how the value reference and pointer stuff works. I'm at this place that is called pythontutor.com, but there's a C++ version of it that shows you some of the information in a visual format as it's walking through. Let me talk about this code real quick. It's very similar to the example I used in SigWin. This time I have a struct instead of just having a variable. I'm creating a struct down here, and I'm using a struct pointer here where I create a new one. And then I have a by value where I pass in the my struct and uh, the pointer, so dereferencing the pointer. I have a by reference method that gets called. So down here, by value has just the regular one, and it assigns two, these two variables to different values. This is the by reference one where it uses this ampersand, and I assign those two values. And then I created two more, which are you pass in a pointer, and then you pass in a pointer by reference. So you're getting all sorts of crazy symbols. And I'll talk about these in a minute, but basically I change the pointer that's passed in, I create a new pointer, and change those values in each of these. So let's take a look at what all of those things do. So something I should probably talk about is in computer programs, there are two pieces of memory that end up getting used. There's something called the stack and then something called the heap. Whenever you create a variable and declare it within a method, so something like this mystruct, and actually this pointer as well, that gets created on the stack. And those things keep on living until they reach the closing brace of that particular section. And then the delete method gets called on those variables. So this mystruct will live from this brace to this brace. As soon as this brace finishes, it gets rid of it. For loops, it's the end of the for loop. We'll get rid of whatever the um, counter is. Those things that live within a block are on the stack. Whenever you use this new keyword, that gets allocated to the heap. And the useful thing about things allocated on the heap is they can, be, they can live between different methods. So something that's created on the heap will stick around until you explicitly call delete on it, which is great until you forget to delete something and then you have something called a memory leak. So we'll look at this as we go. If I take a step forward, I'm at main. So I create an object called my struct. It's on the stack. A pointer is created, and I call the new keyword on it. The new keyword calls the constructor, which just creates those two variables. And so now the pointer is pointing to this thing on the heap because I called the new uh, keyword on the struct. All right, I'm going to pass by value. So I'm passing this struct by value. When you pass by value, it makes a copy. So if I take a step forward, notice that this parameter, new s, gets a copy of my struct. This is a totally different object where the values get copied in. So when I start here, it has the 5 and 7. When I change a and b for the struct, so that changes 10, that changes 15, notice it did not affect the original structure. And when I go back, it has not changed at all. And then this other one got deleted. So because that other one went out of scope, it was this parameter went out of scope, it got deleted. All right, next, po passing by pointer. Well, kind of. What we're doing is we're really dereferencing this pointer. So what that means is it takes this object here and treats it like the pointer is that object. So it follows the pointer to where this is, and this, then it accesses this object directly. And in our case, what this does is it makes a copy of this object down here. So this object gets copied to there, 10, 15, and back we go did not affect the original. All right, now that we've passed the by value methods, we're now going on to the by reference. So that's where it uses this ampersand. And if we look at this guy, this is actually acting like it is a pointer to whatever the object was, rather than making a copy of that object. So in a way, what you're doing is you're actually passing in the original object. So if I change this one to 20, 25, notice that it's actually changing this thing here, the original mystruct. And similarly here, when I take a step here, notice it's actually pointing to this thing that's out on the heap. So basically it follows a pointer and points to the thing it was pointing at. 
So the ampersand is basically altering the original structure, whatever it was. So now I've changed that guy out on the heap. All right. So next, let's talk about pointers and pointers by reference. So here I'm creating a struct pointer that points to the address of my struct. So notice that this is now pointing to this object here. So I am passing in so this by pointer value. So I'm just passing in the pointer here of original struct. So that gets passed into here. So it creates a new pointer, but it is pointing to the original structure. So this makes a copy of the pointer, but the pointer is still pointing to the original location. So this means that if I'm changing the values here, notice it's actually changing this original structure. Um, I'm using the arrow because I have to dereference this pointer and then access its A and B values. You can use the other method where you basically parenthesize this dereference here and then use the dot, though make sure you do that properly with parentheses or else you'll have problems with order of operations. So what happens if I take this new pointer and create another struct? So it calls a constructor. So it creates a new object on the heap over here. It sets its value to A to 40 and then 45. And then it gets to here. This object gets deleted. Now, it's not going to show it in this visualizer, but that means that this object that I just created is still in memory, but the pointer will get deleted. So this object will have nothing pointing to it anywhere in my program. This is called a memory leak, when you have space that's been allocated, but it's never deleted. So a better way to have done this is that I should have called the delete new pointer at the very end of this to make sure this object didn't get deleted. So then we go back up here. And you still secretly have that section of memory that's still been allocated. So here's the one that uses all the symbols. We have a pointer passed by reference with the ampersand. What? What does that mean? So I am passing in the pointer struct, this original one I had up here. So what this does is this creates a pointer to this pointer. When I'm changing A and B, once again, I'm changing this original object's value, much like I did in the by value one. Now, the difference comes right here. When I create a new pointer here, what I'm doing is I'm actually changing this object. So then if I go back, remember that we have this object S that has the 50 and 55. When I create the new object, I'm actually altering this pointer's structure. It's now creating a new object that it's pointing to out in the heap. And then this object here has nothing referring to it. So I'm creating a different memory leak because this object gets basically has nothing referring to it. And then I can change this object and its values. So you may ask yourself, like, why would I ever do this? Well, if you're creating something like a uh, linked list where like you have a head pointer to the first node and each node after that points to the next one so on if you actually need to alter the original head value you probably need to pass it in this way because you want this original pointer to point to some other place another example is in Zool uh, when you need to change what the current room is pointing to back in your original main method you probably need to pass the current room pointer by reference this code is out on the website, and you are welcome to go change these things and play with it.